When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Hey, it's Nate, and today we're going to do a piano tutorial for Let It Be by the Beatles. This is a really special one for me. It was the first song I had learned with chords on piano. Uh, my dad taught it to me when I was probably eight or nine. And it was also the first song I ever performed live. I sang it at the middle school talent show in seventh grade with my band Immature Youth. I posted the whole thing if you want to check it out. We'll start with the foundation in a way you'll be able to play even if you're a beginner, but it'll still sound satisfying. And then we'll build on that in a few layers to get it to the point where it really sounds like the Beatles recording. Let's just jump in. We'll start off with the chords for the intro and the verse, and I put a link to a chords and lyrics chart down in the description. I recommend getting that. That'll help you follow along and see where the chords line up with the words you sing. Here's how I have the chords notated for the intro, and you're gonna play the same thing in the verses as well. Now, just at first, let's simplify it slightly. So for the C major chord, We've got a C, an E, and a G in the right hand. We'll just do a C in the left hand, so we're just playing single bass notes on the root, the note the chord is named after. After that, we're gonna go down to a G major chord, and it's gonna be G, B, and D. Once again, just hitting a G in the left hand, nice and low, so it feels powerful. We're gonna step up to an A minor chord, still all white keys, so A in the left hand, and that's gonna be A, C, and E in the right hand. Now for the F major seven, conveniently, you can just keep that A minor chord going in the right hand and just change to an F bass note. That kind of gives you the F major seven chord sound, but you only have to play three notes in the right hand. Let's stick on this one line for a sec. We're in four, four time, so every measure gets four counts. It's a pretty fast four, four time. We're thinking one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna do half note hits with my right hand. So each chord in the right hand lasts for two counts. So it's gonna be like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Just holding the left hand bass notes, but doing two hits per measure in the right hand. You can already start hearing the song in there. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me. Now, if we do the next line, just keeping it simple, just the basic chords here. We've got C, C, then G, G again. And then you can just go down, do an F here, F, A, C, F, two, and then you can go down to this C. We're gonna do the uh, in a minute, but if you just wanna keep it super simple, you could just do F, two, C, two. I'm gonna add a second layer of difficulty here. Here's where it really starts to sound like the song. Between the C and the G, we're gonna add a little passing tone. We're gonna do an F sharp, so the black key there, and we're gonna do it, we need to think about eighth notes, so that space between the counts, one and two and three and four, and we're gonna do one, two, three, four, and one. So just right before you go to that G. Um, on the recording, Paul sometimes hits an F instead, F. You can do what sounds better to you. I originally learned it with the F sharp, um, and that's what I'm used to. So I'm just gonna do it that way every time I think Paul changes it up. So we got one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Um, so between the A minor and the F major seven, we're gonna do a little passing uh, walk down in the left hand on the G. So you see in the chord chart it says A minor over G there. Um, and that's on beat four. One, two, three, four. And I'm just hitting the right hand chord an additional time there to just uh, sync up with the left hand walking down. So there's a little bit more rhythm happening in that measure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's the final variation there. It's the F6. So here's the F major seven. That's the seventh. And then we're stepping it down to the sixth. And that's on the second half of that measure. One, two, three, four. I'm gonna do that all one more time. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
it sounds like, let it be. Side note, if you're doing this and it doesn't sound as smooth as what you hear here, it might be because I am using the pedal. I'm pressing down the sustain pedal the whole time, except doing a quick little lift every time the chord changes. Lift, lift. So for the second line, it starts the same way. And then for that F to the C, notice there's the little asterisk there. That's because something fancy happens. It's gonna sound like this. Now what's happening there is pretty simple. It can be a little tricky to execute though. In the left hand, we're walking down from an F to a C. So it's F, E, D, C. And the timing on that is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. In the right hand, we're also just gonna be stepping down, but from A down to E. And I like to use start it on my fourth finger here. That way you end up on your thumb and it just kind of feels nice and even. So in my left hand, I'm starting on my second finger. Right hand, I'm starting on my fourth finger. F and A. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. I promise it'll feel easy once you get the hang of it, but if it's tripping you up, just go really, really slow. Keep the hands separate at first and just kind of map it out, take your time, it'll click. So I'm just gonna play through the intro and the first verse with the piano arrangement as we have it so far. When I find myself in times of trouble, mother Mary comes to me. Speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me. Speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be. And then we would be going to the chorus. All right, now I'm going to add one more layer to that piano part. This will be the more intermediate one, although there's really blurry lines between beginner, intermediate, and advanced. Anyway, main difference here is we're going to be approaching the left hand with octaves and adding a little bit more rhythm. So once you're doing more than one note at the same time in your left hand, it opens up some possibility for rhythm. So we've been playing on beats one and three with the right hand. With the left hand, you're also going to be playing on beats two and four, just being kind of loose with it, going back and forth. You know, sometimes Paul does it with the high first and then the low, sometimes the low and then the high. Um, he switches it up. He probably played it different every time he ever played this song. Um, I mostly am gonna do high first because it's what comes more naturally to me. So it's gonna look kind of like one, two, three, four, and that one I'm just gonna do the single bass note with the second finger. That flow is really nice to get your thumb on the G for one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So notice after the A octaves, I just step down single fingers. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And I was kind of keeping that rhythm going by hitting the single F on beat two and four. One, two, three, four, just makes the rhythm feel like it's moving a little bit more. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three. And we can do this part the same way. A couple final details I'll mention here. Dynamically, he does something really cool where he actually kind of accents it on beat three, so not on the downbeat of the measure, like one, two, three, Four. Like that chord really pops out one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, especially on the C at the beginning. One variation you could do at the end of the first line is instead of doing the two Fs and then going back to the C, you could do and then do the high octave and then the low one. He does that pretty often in the recording, it sounds good. Final thing I'll mention is throughout the song when things are ever kind of waiting, like at the end of ba, da, 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 two, three, four, and you're kind of holding and ready for the next thing, he'll just go like ba, two, three, four. Um, as the song gets more intense, he actually does like one, two, and three, and four, and. Um, so you can just kind of hit 
extra rhythms where you want. And if it feels like I'm being really loosey goosey with this, it's because, you know, he played it different every time. Uh, it would be such a long video if I tried to tell you note for note how the Beatles recording you hear on the album uh, was played. And it would just be a waste of time because um, the next time he played it, it was different. So I just want to give you the tools to play around with it the way he always was. So now I'll play through the intro and first verse with these additions. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be. All right, it's time for the chorus. Knowing what you now know, learning the chorus will be easy. I'm gonna strip it back down to level one. It starts with the A minor, so A, C, E. We're doing it in the verse. Let it be, let it be. This is uh, C over G. So we're stepping down to G in the left hand. In the right hand, we're gonna do G, C, and E. So this is a C major chord, right? We just took the G and brought it down here. But you can more just think of it as you're doing the A minor chord and then you just step the bottom note down. Then we've got an F, let it be. We're gonna do an inversion on it. So I step down to the F root here the, for the bass note. But in the right hand, we're gonna do A, C, and F. So it's just an inversion on an F major chord. And then we've got let it be back to C. And then the second line of the chorus is the same as the second line of the intro and verse. Whisper words of wisdom, let it be. So here's the chorus with the level one piano part. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Whisper words of wisdom. In the level two would just be adding some of those octaves and rhythms in the left hand. Let it be, let it be, let it be, let it be. Whisper words of wisdom, let it be. Okay, we're in good shape here. The only other section is the interlude section, which also happens in the outro. That's the... part's really fun. It's a lot of stepping down in harmony between the hands. Does the same rhythm we've done at the second line of all the other sections so far, that one, two, three, four, one, but it loops into itself like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. The left hand is gonna be stepping from F to F with one little caveat, which is that the B is flat. We do the black key B flat instead of the B. So it's gonna look like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. There's a million ways you could do this. You could just do one finger. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. If you've taken piano lessons and have done scales and have the muscle memory for crossing your thumb under, that is a good thing to do here. Cross there. probably are hearing it's not complete right there's a jump from the F down to a C to finish it off so F to F B flat instead of B and then C in the right hand very similar idea but we're going from A down to A and we're not doing the B flat for that one we're gonna do the B for that one very tricky, those Beatles. For the fingering, I'll probably go five, four, three, two, one, cross third finger over, three, two, one, and that's where the jump happens. Um, the A jumps down to a 
E for that final moment there. Notice that's a C major chord. Well, we don't have the G yet, but that's the harmony that's happening there if you kind of flushed it out. Take your time with your hand separate to get the muscle memory and get a sense of which fingers you're using because if you're tripping up one hand at a time, you're really gonna trip up when you put them together. So get used to it first, but it's gonna sound like this. on the Beatles recording, that's where that organ comes in. It kind of does the same thing again, but it's nice and high, satisfying. I'm just gonna take it up an octave and do. And that takes us into the guitar solo section, which is just like a verse in terms of the piano part, but maybe you got a friend that can do the guitar solo over it. But if not, I think the piano part is engaging enough to just let it go around for one instrumental pass with the piano being the sole focus. And the outro that ends the song is just one time through that in the lower octave. Although on that final hit, I'm gonna do just the full C chord probably, just so it feels a little bit more like it's landed in a thick, solid place. Hey guys, real quick, just wanna say, if you are enjoying this piano lesson and you wanna get better at taking these simple chord progressions and turning them into more interesting, recognizable piano parts, you might like my course, Piano Chord Breakthroughs, where I walk through lots of tricks for doing that. The kind of tricks where, well, if Paul McCartney didn't know any of these tricks, the piano part on the Let It Be recording might have been like. put links down in the description, check it out. Quickly, one more layer of potential details if you came here thirsty to make it sound as much like the way Paul McCartney plays it as possible. A lot of that comes along with the those sections. Now, he doesn't do that exactly. I think that is a very satisfying way to play it that is not too hard. On the recording in the intro, instead of that, he goes. So actually the left hand is just hanging out on the root, the F and the C, and the harmony is happening in the right hand, the top part of the right hand while kind of holding down that C. And in the verses, he inverts it so the A starts on the bottom. And you're doing it kind of like that. And it's like. Speaking of inversions, there's a lot of inversions that I was not doing that happen on the recording. At least the first couple of passes of the piano part at the beginning, he's not doing that root position C major chord, he's doing it inverted down once with the E as the highest note. And then also an inversion of this G with the G as the highest, B, D, G. He actually does this inversion of the G a lot throughout. It doesn't sound that much better to me. He doesn't do it every time, so I didn't want to make it too complicated for the main part of the tutorial. And on the chorus, again, you can switch up the inversions. We've got this part. We're already doing that inversion for the F, but you might want to do this inversion of the C. And then, of course, you can do that inversion of the G with the high G. But I'm not even gonna sweat doing those variations in my cover. Um, I'm gonna focus on singing. And finally, for the interlude, like when you go up high with the organ, there's a little more harmony and rhythm going on on the recording, it's like. So again, just like the intro, putting both notes of the harmony in the right hand while kind of staying steady on a C here. Doing this little rhythm, this back and forth thing. One, two, and three, and four, and and then hitting like an inversion of C here. One, two, and hitting an inversion of B flat here with the thumb going to F. And then once you get to the G's, just kind of hitting that inversion and holding it. And then down to C. Anyway, I didn't want to leave anything out on this tutorial because this song is important to me, but I don't think that these advanced parts are super important to the song. All right, thank you for watching this far. I'm gonna do a full cover now so you can see how all the different parts that we just learned fit together in a full performance of the song. I'm mostly gonna be playing with the level two piano part. If you enjoyed this, consider the prospects of subscribing. Um, hit that little weird bell thing next to it so you know when I come out with new videos like it. Give it a like and let me know in the comments what song you wanna hear next. All right, here's my version of Let It Be.
When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be, let it be. Wake up to the sound of music 